Hey, this is Jordan with Honda How To, and winter is creeping right up on us, so it's a good time to talk about heaters, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. And you have various um, different kind of heaters. You got your heat pump. Uh, we got a uh, ceramic and a different kind of forced heat things, and then you got like natural gas and uh, well, there's different methods. But today, I'm just going to be talking about these uh, three right here: the heat pump, and then these two different kind of forced forced air heat um what inspired me to do this was this um quartz heater here and if any of you guys know anything about quartz heaters they claim to heat uh square footage a lot of square footage which i have found to be um not true and that's your standard uh ceramic heater which has been out for a long time but basically my findings um are that these are pretty much the same thing um and that's all I'm really going to share with you is oh, what I actually researched and found out I'm just going to go over it with you briefly and the big thing is that I paid $130 for this quartz heater and this ceramic heater was only $45 so there's a big price difference there and um they basically do the same thing so Here's a a pretty um, basic basic efficiency chart, if you could call it that. Um, I'm saying here the high current conductors. That's what I've deemed these two things right here um, because they have two different names. So I just want to put them on the same page. Um, they are 3.4 times efficient, and what I mean by that is if you take a thousand watt heater, for example, and times it by 3.4 that's how many BTUs you're gonna get and it does it the same they if this was a thousand watt heater and this was a thousand watt heater they'd put, both put out 3400 BTUs and then when you look at your um, electric heat pump um, it is 10 times efficient um, and that's per electric use so if you have a 3000 watt um, heater like that wall heat pump heater um, then it'll put out 30,000 BTUs so they're much more efficient and um there is actually a formula for um how much heat you actually need and I need to draw that um basically it goes something like you take a room you go 10 times 10 and you get 100 square feet I'm looking for a pen and then you take the 100 times 8 and then cuz your ceiling is 8 feet tall and then you get 800 cubic feet so for a 10 by 10 room with eight um, feet ceilings you're gonna get 800 square feet and then you times 800 by 3 and that's just a real general number um, if you really want to look into it google it and uh, there's like calculators out there that'll uh, help you out and then you're going to get 2400 so that's the that's 2400 cubic feet so that's they're saying a cubic one BTU per cubic feet per cubic foot so for that room you need a 2400 BTU heater but for a room like the size of my down, downstairs living room it's 700 square feet so the math for that it comes out to be something like 16,000 BTUs so <clears throat> I took the average um the not average advertised a uh, 600 square foot heater here to be able to heat up my whole downstairs here but um it wasn't able to do so so when I did more research I found out that it didn't work that way but um, from their angle, what I see them saying is that if you're using a different heating source and you're in a 600 square foot room, then I guess they're saying that you're going to lose 3,400 BTUs and this will be a good supplement. But to say that it actually heats up a 600 square foot room, I think that's, uh, that's misleading. So I was just sharing that with you guys and uh, I hope you all can benefit from it and stay warm this winter and keep the heating bills down.
Cool. Thanks for watching this episode of Honda Hats.